Hey, welcome back to day two or mission two of uh, of trial and suffering. <laughs> um, so I was just talking with uh, one of the YouTubers and uh, it was very interesting because, you know, the after action report is, you know, really twofold. Uh, I did take some non-luck skills, which caused me to take hits when had I taken luck, I would have absorbed hits. Uh, because that's how much I value luck in this game. Like, to me, luck is the king skill. Uh, but with that being said, I still didn't think I was going to get trounced, which I did. But it really all boiled down to, in my opinion, uh, I rolled a six when I could have rolled any of the nine other options. <laughs> and that is definitely what put me under. Okay, so we're now moving to mission two. So um, if I put this up over here for you guys again... So we're going to be doing mission two and just, you know, because, you know, we could go three, four, five, six. I mean, it's, uh, I can think of very few reasons why you wouldn't do all six missions, uh, but the victory points don't carry over. So I guess once you get to double the victory points you need, you could stop. Sorry, I had to pause real quick there. I was I received a phone call and one of my cameras is my phone. <laughs> so um, uh, the good news is I was able to pause the recording so I don't think that screwed things up too much. Um, okay, so as you can see, I wrote down 1942 and then GN just stands for Germany North. That doesn't change uh, from, you know, cause we're locked into the season. It's a season for a reason, right? Um, However, we still have to get out the, the rule book. And uh, I do want to do a call out to, I think it was Adam who made a uh, comment um, that we need some board game geek nerds to consolidate all these player aids so we can have just one uh, sheet or, you know, a couple pages of things that has everything we need. Um, I can't I can't express enough how that's actually my biggest gripe of the game so far is that I'm like I'm getting out this sheet here to uh, to just do one thing and uh, I tried to consolidate a bit of it but we'll see okay so this is locked in this is locked in but what we're doing is we're figuring out what formation map we're gonna do so let's go ahead and roll that's a seven and a seven is map two okay if if we have any desire to score victory points and win this game, getting map two with our 1942 guys is not the way to do it. <laughs> uh, this is absolutely not the way to get there, folks. Um, okay, so map two is still the B-17s. Uh, we just have to flip this over. And um, formation two is going to look like this. And I uh, always got to make sure it's formation map two. But now this is where it has elements. So uh, it, can you see this white line that goes up to here and then over? This is one element. This is two, three, four. So it's literally just a, uh, a cross uh, through the middle of the board. And there's four corners of it. And those, there's four elements, basically. Um, all the other... Um, Things that you see should be familiar to you. There's really nothing new that was added. Well, there was one thing new added, and I'll show you in a second. But, but like this is the same. It just got moved, right? You know. So, so some of the artwork, you know, gets moved around. All the boxes are the same, except for there's one box up there called high bombing, and it's used for the um, dropping bombs. And uh, later for cables, which uh, which came with Storm Above the Reich. You don't see that on Formation Map 1 because the bombs don't become available until 1943. And when you're in 1943, you don't see Formation Map 1 anymore. So Formation Map 1 is only a 1942 thing. So Formation Map 2, you will see in 1943, which is why I sort of sighed and said, you know, <laughs> we're not doing anything to help our cause here. Okay. So, uh, we got that figured out. Now I go ahead and uh, put 
the rule book away. And now we need to use this for the rest. So I'm gonna just use uh, this here and then I got my sheet over there. I actually, I, I love using that other camera for certain things, but this actually, uh, uh, to me, it's a little bit more efficient. So I rolled a seven, which means we're gonna get an outbound mission again. And that um, translates to only one victory point a try. So, uh, so we're doing map two. It's an outbound mission and we really need some OPs, which the outbound mission does give you extra OPs. That part's good. So I rolled a six and the six um, is translating to six OP. So we're going to get six again. And uh, because we're always playing with that pursuit, or not the pursuit, but the vector map, um, is it vector? I think so. Um, we're always going to get two more, which that part, I guess, is good. So that means we're going to get eight. So um, happy about that. But we don't get to spend those two until we actually join the vector map. And then this is the part where we need a better roll. Remember how we had the crappy L? Um, and I rolled a two, which is still better, right? Because... Look here, it's an L3S versus an LS. Um, it's not much better, but it's at least a little bit. Um, so what the L3S means, uh, well, first of all, it's light, Spitfire, and then the three, when it's an outbound mission, means that they're going to arrive on turn three to help escort the bombers home. So for three turns, the bombers are gonna be unescorted. And then after that, um, it's all fair game. So uh, I was supposed to spend my OP points before we did this, but as you understand, in 1942, there is absolutely nothing to spend it on other than just planes. So escort's going to arrive at three, and everything else is still got to roll for that. Okay, so what are we going to do spending-wise? Uh, let me put this sheet away. And I don't think we need this sheet other than to denote that for mission one... We got zero and zero, zero experience, zero of those, uh, two pilots were killed. So that counts against our uh, loss. And uh, this stinks. There we go. That's our summary of mission one. <laughs> All right, let's go to mission two here. Uh, I, I just... Uh, I, you know, I, I try hard not to poke fun at other YouTubers because, I mean, I know that I'm not professional at all with my YouTube channel. Um, but I think that's what allows me to pick fun of the ones that are professional. Um, there are people doing reviews of Storm Above the Reich. I mean, it's literally skies above the Reich. <laughs> uh, it's, there's, there's like hardly, not, not even a, a smidgen of rule change there's just like, you know, one extra optional rule that was added. And uh, and then, of course, you could combine the two. I, I honestly don't know how you can make a video out of it. I just summarized it all in 10 seconds. Um, uh, anyways, sorry for the thing. But um, there's like, you know, because I'm posting this stuff to YouTube. And so now I'm getting like all these recommended videos. And and, and they're recommending that I watch these uh, reviews of, of Storm Above the Reich because I'm posting Storm of the Reich. Anyways, uh it just, it makes me laugh because I, I don't know what it is that, and I'm not even watching them, of course, so I, I probably should uh, have an open mind, but okay, back to this. We're going to still use this pursuit map. So I'm just gonna set it off to the side. And then we are going to use the See, I'm already getting overwhelmed with uh, too many uh, player aids and printouts. Situation manual. So uh, we did determine that we have to do this. So map two outbound is page 11. So let's get to page 11, see how this works. And uh, it's really funny. This, this uh, the, the flak did more damage, as much damage to the bombers as all, what, eight fighters did? Seven fighters? Last time, that was awful. Okay, <clears throat> outbound mission, let's roll, and then uh, we'll show you the picture. 
So I rolled a seven and the picture looks like this. So uh, there is no formation A, formation B in this one. So obviously we have the, the four elements which aren't shown here, but, but it's just saying that this group up here, the, the lead plane is getting hit, right? Lead plane on that one, lead plane on that one, and then the rear, uh, if you're looking at it from behind, the, the rear leftmost one uh, got hit there or the one closest to us sitting at the table. So lead, lead, and then rear left, okay? So there's three hits there. And before I uh, bother rolling the rest of the dice, let's let's make sure we, we do that. And uh, sometimes when these maps get a little crazy, it's hard to visualize everything, but this looks pretty simple. So it's gonna be uh, this guy right here, this guy right here, and that one right there. So, Doing it in the exact order I just pointed at them. So there's the first one. The second one is there. And the last one, three wings. That's pretty crazy. All right, well this one, uh, there's no roll for it. So we just flip it over and it's one wing damage. And then I'm gonna roll for this one. I rolled a two, so nothing happens there. That's two wing damage. And then this one, I rolled a six, so still nothing. And that's two wing damage for him. Okay, so just a quick reminder, <coughs> the wing damage needs to be at five in order for it to be uh, threatening. So if you can get the bomber to fall, um, a five would be enough to get a victory point. Um, some of them are at two, so that's decent. Um, you know, you really don't have control over where they get hit when you're drawing these tokens. So um, it's really a bit of luck, but it's always good to just mentally keep track of, you know, where the weaknesses are. And then let's keep rolling. Um, so the next thing we're going to roll for is anchor. So I rolled a four. And uh, the anchor is going to go here under level and low. And that's the uh, flank. Okay, the flank on the other side of the board, level and low, uh, that's where the anchor is going to go. And uh, this is a new concept, so I will explain it. Let me grab the tokens real quick. Uh, you need to grab these tokens here, the anchored tokens, and then you just come over here to the flank, and at level and low, you put the word anchor over it. So a couple of things with the anchor. Um, uh, we can't approach from that direction. So basically those, those two spaces are blocked from us from being able to use. And then um, you can, well, hold on, hold on. No, 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 we, we, can, we can approach from them. Uh, the issue is, is it adds a plus one to the flank. So see how it says plus one anchored flank. So this is normally a two threat, but it becomes a three. So this is normally a two threat, but it becomes a three uh, because uh, we're anchored on, on the flank side. This is two threat, and it becomes a three if the tail was anchored, but the tail's not anchored in this situation. So uh, that's, that's all that, that means. Um, sorry about that uh, mental gap there. Then I'm going to roll for the sun, and I rolled an eight, and the eight is no sun, so that hurts us. And then I'm going to roll a six, for tactical points, so we're gonna get three, which is way better than last time. Okay, and then I'm gonna roll for the flight limit, and I rolled a three, which is seven turns, so that's still decent, like so. And there are no contrails on this map. So uh, contrails are just, you know, it's basically, it's real easy to find the fight, the bombers, you know, because they're leaving contrails. Um, so let's push this up a little so we have some room in front of us here and then get out that other sheet. And I know I'm, I'm this far in and I haven't selected my uh, fighters yet. Uh, from a rule perspective, you are supposed to have selected them by now. So I don't want you to think that um, uh, I'm doing this the right way. If you're thinking to yourself, hey, weren't you supposed to have selected them by now? Yes, the answer is yes. But it's real easy. I'm, I'm selecting six of them. And I'm gonna select all my experts. So 
uh, Schmidt is the only uh, BF-109 expert. I'm getting clobbered on the BF-109s, and they're the ones that, to me, are the stronger ones. So uh, Schmidt, for sure, and then uh, we're going to do the three, always walk, watching Grislowski and Barr and Ifland. Okay, so all three of those are going to come back, the FW-190s. And then, um, so this is really risky, but if I take my green guys and they die, I cannot replace them. And so then I'm running into a big risk. I can take these other guys and, and just do fine, right? And even if they did die, I could still replace them and not have to worry about the, um, the pilot limit. But if I don't level up these green guys, I'm going to have a bunch of green guys that are going to, um, you know, not be able to do anything. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take regular guys. Uh, they're going to give me two bonus OP, and I think I'm going to bring the green guys as part of that, if that makes sense. And so um, I do have one experience point here on Grislowski. Uh He's the only one. <laughs> so um, so uh, I'll just grab whatever two I can find, Richter and Oblice. Obliser, Obliser, um, I'm sure in a German accent, they, they make sense. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's my six. So we will take Zwiegert and Buttfargen, which is now Zach and Peter, um, as our two bonus ones. So uh, Zwiegert and Buttfargen are going to be our bonus ones, and um, it's Zach and Peter. Okay, and, and the reason I'm getting bonus ones is right here. I'm getting two OP, two TP, two flight limits. So the tactical points are going to go up by one, two, and this is supposed to be the flight limit, and then that's going to go up by one, two. All right, so um, I could probably bring that a bit closer. So, okay. So all of our guys... So uh, let's see, I'm gonna have a stack of three, stack of three, and then the two bonus ones, which I will make a stack of four with. Ugh. They gotta be the same type. Um, I probably should have taken some one FW-190s, but that's okay, we'll do it this way and see how this shakes out. Uh, I don't necessarily need three in this stack. Um, I could make it a two and two, actually. And uh, I'm okay. Let's do that. All right. So uh, we were supposed to move forward, so I did, right? And now we uh, take our dice, roll them, because we got to do the situation check. And here you can see I got an 11. And we come here to 1942. Uh, we're in this zone. We got an 11. So it's a weather issue. And the weather one, I'm beginning to start to like the weather one. Uh, it means I can move high. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these four high, like that. Okay, so there's no flight action because there's no escorts on the board and there's no intercept. And so we move again. So for zero TP, I can move here. Although I have five, I could spend one and stay high. Ooh. Um, do I really want to spend a TP though? My answer is partially yes. Hmm. No, I'll just move them all up like this. Okay, let's roll dice. So I got a 10, we go back down to here, and we got the weather again. So again, I get to go high for free. <laughs> so there you go. I didn't have to spend the TP. This mini game is a little silly in some respects, but I think it's gonna get crazier once you get into the higher years. Uh, the game sort of like is in uh, amateur mode whenever in 42. All right, so now we're in the last zone. So we're gonna do approaching zone, which is up here versus down here. And I may have made a mistake last time. I think I used this in Mission 1 when I was supposed to use this in Mission 1. And I'm very strongly believing I did. So um, so we won't make that mistake this time. So I'm going to move everybody up. Uh, 
and I rolled a six, which is not good. Uh, and so we get up here and a six is two Spitfires, which is awful, 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 awful. Oh my God, is that awful. <laughs> oh man. Oh, come on. All right, so here's all of our Spitfires. Um, first of all, two of them are gonna be taken out, so we'll take out these two, because it's a light Spitfire. And now two of them are being selected for this. So I'll select those two, and I'll put these three on the below trailing. Okay, so um, here we have to assign the escorts, and we could possibly uh, evade uh, battle. Uh, this is... Um, This is brutal. Okay, uh, give me a second. I'm gonna do some rule reading here because obviously we never did this before. I wanna make sure I got it right and then I'll be right back. Okay, so first thing that it says is that these escorts, <clears throat> they go into uh, one of your zones, which we're all in the same zone. So so this is awful. They're go both going into this zone that all my fighters are in. Um, they do come from the pool that's over here if there is uh, a pool over here. Otherwise, they come out of the, the general supply. So no matter what, they come. So even if you have a mission where there's no escorts assigned, um, you still get them. The one thing it did say, though, is that these two that are going to be used here will not participate in the regular battle. So uh, this is reduced to three for the uh, actual mission. And so um, there is, I guess, a positive silver lining in all this. Uh, a really crappy one, if you ask me, but it's still there. Okay, <clears throat> so here's what we do when there's an escort in a zone. <clears throat> we assign one escort marker per group. If there's more escort markers than groups, then assign extra to the largest group. And so we do get to choose the groups. So, for example, I can just say, you know what, you're going to go there and you're going to go there and take the two smallest groups. Um, I have a chance of this one being killed, which isn't good. Um, or I could try to assign one to the largest group and hope that the largest group can kill it. But please understand that they can get taken completely out of the mission because that's what happens when they get tied up with a fighter. So um, here's the next thing to understand is that there's an evasion check. So you get to, um, if you roll a perfect 10, <laughs> um, you will evade them and they go away. And they don't go back here, by the way. They're gone forever. So um, the fact that you got two escorts here doesn't mean that they go back just because they don't participate in anything. And then if you had altitude advantage, you get a, um, you get a, a chance to roll for that. And, um, and there's a die roll modifier of uh, extra TP. So we're gonna go through these one at a time. There are no contrails, so if there were, uh, that would actually make the roll a little bit better, easier to evade, I guess. <clears throat> so it says, select a group that wishes to evade. Any or all may attempt evasion, one group at a time and one marker at a time. Roll one die compared to the number rolled on the evasion number in the zone. If it's equal to or higher, evasion is successful and the escort marker is removed from play. Uh, if less than the evasion, the attempt fails. After rolling a die, you may attach a delay marker to the group and then get an immediate plus two die roll modifier. Uh, you have to make this decision after rolling the die. Delay markers already attached to the group do not provide a modifier. Okay, so I can choose to delay the group. So... Um, So in the example, if there's an escort marker, marker in the zone, you assign it to a group. Um, you can roll a die for evasion, which fails. You can voluntarily attach a delay marker to that group in order to bump your roll to an 11. Oh, it bumps your roll, okay. Which would then successfully evade. I got it, I got it. So. 
So if I roll like an eight or a nine, I can choose to delay my group to get past the 10, which would then make it succeed. Okay, so that's a fair enough check. And we get to do that with both of our uh, groups. I think a delay is gonna mean that like, you're gonna start the mission and they won't be there on turn one. They'll, they'll arrive a little bit late. So if an escort marker is not evaded, so we're jumping ahead here, battle is imminent. So we're gonna roll a die to determine if your fighters have altitude advantage to see if they're higher, and that's what this is. And you can spend TP uh, to add plus one, and you can spend as many TP as you have to, uh, to get that altitude advantage. And, and then once you get past that point, then you uh, resolve each attack using the aerial combat table, just like you would in the regular game. So that means that they could be shot down, that means they could uh, be forced to exit the map, which means that they go back home, all the stuff that, so uh, uh, hold on a second. It does say, results such as breakaway and dogfight pretty much assured that combatants would lose contact with the bombers. Here, en route to violent rendezvous with the bombers, these results have a different effect. In particular, breakaway is quite different. Ooh, this is actually quite interesting. So, uh, if there's a breakaway, the escort marker is removed from play and may not come back. The group shifts to a lower altitude. If already low, it spends one TP or returns to the base. Then somewhere, possibly all the fighter must return to base, remove them from play. Oh, it's got to be a battle value equal to the escort number that was printed on the thing. So the battle value is, uh, this is where the Wiley skill comes in. So if you have an expert, a veteran, or a green, and remember, you're, you're a veteran if you're not green, um, so you're in the middle. So the veteran, like if you sent him home, that's worth two points. If you send the green guy home, that's only worth one point. And then you have auxiliaries that you can send home. And um, you do still have to send people home, but it's just not the, necessarily the entire group. Uh, it, that's interesting. I don't know how much it's going to help us. Um, and then the dogfight is the same as the breakaway, except there's a possibility that um, the escort marker will immediately do a second attack. Um, if your BV value does not equal to the fighter group, then the escort attacks again. So you have to have enough BV value to, to send away for the dogfight. Okay, this isn't that exciting. <clears throat> uh, this is very painful, in fact. So let's try the evasion first. So if I roll high enough, I can do well. Um, we're going to do red for this guy, black for that one. And um, I still have a chance. I, I could put one of these on there. That's still a possibility. And, and the reason I'm, I would say that is because then I could win the dogfight, or I would win and possibly avoid the... Um, the outcome of a breakaway. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is. And yes, red for the right, black for the left. All right, so I got a nine on the black, a seven on this one. So I can delay the black one. And I need to find my delay markers here. I know they gave me some. Here they are. So the opposite side of aggressive is delay. <clears throat> so I'll put it... This uh, escort goes away, and they are delayed. <clears throat> and that escort goes away, so it's out of the game. This escort, however, I can't do anything to, because all I can do is bump it up to a nine, which is one short. So the next thing I can do is roll for altitude advantage, and let's do that. I rolled a five, so I can choose to spend one TP to get altitude advantage, and I will do that. So my TP is gonna go from five down to four. And so now I have altitude advantage. And yes, we gotta do a fight. Fight, fight, fight. All right, so we're up against Fitfires. Uh, we actually have a mixture of these. And oh gosh, I forgot, what do you do in a mixture? Um, I think you can pick whichever one you want, but let me uh, check. Okay, so I'm definitely eating my Wheaties uh, today. 
my memory has been spot on so far. <clears throat> if you have a mixture of two types, you get to pick. And in the rule book specifically says the higher up on the table, the better. FW190s are always the best. Um, so this particular group that we're up against is a mixture. There's a BF109 and an FW190. So um, this is great. So we're going to use this top table right here. Now the only question is, is how big is this number? And it's an eight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so uh, we definitely don't outnumber them. Uh, but, I'm sorry, we don't have more fighters than them, but we do out, we are higher than them because we spent the TP. So it's yes and then no, so we're going to do row two here. And you can see here, this is dogfight, dogfight, breakaway, breakaway, breakaway. There is no getting out of this. This group has to break away. And the BV value has to be eight. Um, this guy is an expert, so he'll be worth three. This guy's a, a greenie worth one. That's only worth four. Uh, we're going to lose both of them uh, from the battle. So they're going to be gone. Uh, they did give us two OP, and we're going to lose two OP's worth of planes. So I basically exchanged an expert and a, um, a newbie uh, for, uh, for a newbie. <laughs> um, and uh, so, uh, okay, fair enough. So let's roll. And I'm rolling just one die. And I rolled a five, which I'm a little scared of. Okay, the five is just a breakaway. I guess as long as it wasn't, oh no, five is a dogfight. Oh. So I don't have enough BV. So that means it's going to stay and attack again. Um, it's the same as breakaway, except after the aerial combat, there's a possibility escort marker will immediately initiate a second attack. After applying the effects of fighters on the B result, if the BB of the fighter group did not exceed, the escort marker indeed initiates aerial combat again. It targets the largest group in the zone. Oh no! No! Oh man, this game sucks. Okay, so, so these two go home. And then to make matters worse, because the BV value of them did not equal eight. This now targets the largest group in the same zone, which is now this group of four, which is still not enough to beat the eight. And we get to do evasion. So let's roll for the evasion check. And I rolled a two. Oh. So there's no evasion, no choice. Let's do altitude. I rolled a four. I can spend two more tech points. I have to. I absolutely have to to get the, the bonus here. Otherwise, it'd be rolling along the bottom. And no matter what, we're gonna have a dogfight or a BV result again. I don't even know if I should have spent the tactical points, to be quite honest. Um, it doesn't matter. This game just hosed me so bad. Um, all right, I rolled a nine, which is an, a fantastic roll. So I got a B and I destroy the escort. So the escort is destroyed this time. Um, that part's good. So somebody's getting an experience point. Uh, but now I got to lose. So this is three, six. This would only be seven. This would be nine. So, or no, eight. Because that guy's a, a oh, hold on. Schmidt. I need to check my roster. Schmidt is my expert. So he's three points. This is four, five, six, seven, and eight. I lose the entire stack. Oh my gosh. I am... You can't win with just two fighters making it into a mission. This is ridiculous. So I give an experience point to somebody. Um, I'm going to give it to, to Buttfargan, which is now Peter. Uh, and the reason, of course, is because if he gets three experience points, he gets rid of his um, green skill. So now he's only two away. So um, that was not worth it, though, folks. I mean, not even worth it in the slightest. So not only do we have a, a delayed group... <clears throat> I... Uh,
yeah, I don't really uh, care for this mini game. Um, it definitely makes the game harder. There's no doubt about that. Um, <laughs> so much harder. Okay, so now we're going to be intercepting the formation. And I need to figure out what the delay does to us exactly. It does say delay one turn. So I would assume that um, you just, uh, you don't join until it's, um... oh yeah, it says it right here. Um, they will be placed in turn one of the space track. Uh, they will enter a formation map during the move phase. Delay markers delay uh, entry one turn per marker. If no group enters on mission turn one, you just skip all the steps. We don't do any um, cohesion checks or anything like that. So uh, that is straightforward enough. Um, so what we're gonna do is the mission is gonna go all the way up to uh, turn two, and then now we're gonna enter the mission. And so from the level here, and you could, by the way, have more than one delay marker on you. So from the level here, we can uh, we can go uh, low for zero TP anywhere. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We spent a lot of our TP, so we're sitting on only two points worth of TP. <clears throat> Let's put this nasty thing away. I, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so... The uh, escorts come on turn three. So by us being delayed, we don't even get the luxury of, of going without the escorts. Um, I think I'm gonna come in on tail. Now I do want to possibly, so like for example, if I'm here at um, oblique, you know, the flank side, right? I can go to tail any Altitude. I can go high tail, middle tail, low tail from here. Uh, here, I can also go to any tail for zero. So um, if I choose to enter here, I can then swing around and get to the high, the high uh, altitude tail, which I think is a very attractive, um, you know, way to approach. And if you look at these bombers, uh, this one in particular is vulnerable because the threat level is two, which is the lowest you're gonna find on this. Um, maybe a, a one here is the lowest you're gonna find, but this is an undamaged bomber. I wanna go after the damaged ones. And then the problem is, is this guy here is well protected. And if you're up high altitude, they're even more protected, right? So the threat level is even worse. And then here, you would think that you can maybe sneak in this way, but it's really the same threat level. Um, so, Anyways, uh, I think that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> All right, so we're coming in. It's mission turn two. We do our move. We arrive. <clears throat> so the party started. We then do the return step, so nothing happens. The escort step, nothing happens. There's no escort. Blast and flak, nothing. Recovery, nothing. Cohesion, there's only one token in each element. So one, one, and one. So... Cohesion, nothing. Attack, nothing. So now we move to mission turn three. Okay, so let's come back. The escorts are going to arrive. <clears throat> and so they, they show up here. Uh, we're going to use our little advantage here to swing to the tail at any level. So I'm going to swing over to high altitude on the tail. Now... If you're wondering, why didn't you just show up in the tail? Well, I could have, right here, right? I could have come in tail low. But if I wanted to go from tail low to tail high, I would have had to spend one TP to go from tail low to tail high. And I spent zero TP doing it the way I just did. So I hope that makes some sense. But um, uh, everything is uh, is happening for a reason. <laughs> now, um, there's one other thing. Like they have this little silhouette of a of a plane here on the low tail. I don't know what exactly that means. That's actually a good question. I don't know if that means that that's where the um, you get some nice uh, 
like it might be the best way to approach them, you know, because they don't have a good uh, gun angle. Or it might be, you know, that's the best card. I, I don't know. That's, um, if anybody knows, please let me know um, what that little silhouette on, on the approach of low means. Okay. So, uh, again, we go through all the stuff. Uh, the only thing that's changing is there is an escort phase. So let's do the escort phase. I rolled a six, and sure enough, that dang six shows up again, but this time he's not hurting us. So he comes in uh, flank eight to 10 o'clock, which is here level. And right there, it's so eight to 10 o'clock. That's what I was looking for. Um, okay, so now we move to mission turn four. All right, so for our move, we're going to approach high and we got to do the escort step again. I rolled a four, which they move to uh, tail low. So there's an escort now on the tail side, which uh, we're tail high, so there's no worries there. Uh, but that is annoying, <laughs> very annoying in fact. Um, cohesion, everything else doesn't matter. So now we're going to choose to do our attack. So <clears throat> collision checks are not good. They can be problematic. However, if I put uh, two fighters in the same space and make them determined, I can get the Rada advantage, which means that I would block one hit. I don't know how exciting that is because uh, one collision check can ruin my day. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, the collision checks are just too, way too difficult um, to overcome. But then it, then it becomes, well, what else am I going to do with my fighters? Well, I could have maybe, I, well, actually, this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it in two waves. So wave one, um, bar and only bar is going to attack. And then in wave two, we're going to have Grislowski attack. And uh, that's 100% within your rules and options. You don't have to combine them together. Um, I'm just checking. Uh, Grislowski has a breakaway, and uh, Barr has the quick skill. So we're going to do uh, Barr with the quick skill right now and uh, see how this turns out for us. I have no idea how this is going to turn out for us, but let's try it. Okay, so he's tail high, and the way you represent that... Uh, just for teaching purposes, that's tail high. And then don't forget, you're always supposed to say, where do you want them to go? So what I want them to do is I want them to climb to, for example, the nose. And so I'm going to have them just go straight through. I don't need them to do anything fancy. I don't want them rolling left or right. I just want them to climb. So you would put a little climb marker on them or to the side or whatever it is that you want to do. But uh, we're going to have him climb. And um, <clears throat> that means he's going to end up where the nose is. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that that side's anchored, so it's not very attractive. This side has an escort, and we have an escort behind us. That's the only safe spot to go. Um, so I think I would want to do that anyways. <clears throat> but here's the thing. We can come back here. It's only two threat to attack it from the other side. And if we do somehow miraculously shoot this thing down, uh, there's a nose attack here that's very attractive. So uh, that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to just pick these apart little by little, <clears throat> if that's even possible. Okay, so here we go. Tail, the threat level is two. So tail, threat level two. We're on a high altitude. Uh, we take a hit and nothing happens to the bomber. <clears throat> There's a hit with every threat level except for this one. <laughs> I give up. I really do. I mean, this game, I just give up. Ugh. <laughs> what do I got to do? Um, 
So here we go, we got wing damage. And uh, there was no number on it, right? No, of course there's no number. Um, so then we do continuing fire. This is an FW-190, so I gotta use a different deck. So this deck is worse. Because, you know, we're, we're dominating the game, so we need it, something worse. So there we go. Uh, there's a two. If I'm doing, if I'm climbing or slow climbing, I can break away to the tail position. Um, interesting. If climbing or rolling, or climb rolling, I can break away to the tail position, uh, but it adds plus two to the threat. So uh, basically, uh, that two becomes a four. And it's not a may, it's you must break away to the tail position. So um, so I must take a hit at the tail position. Um, now he has the uh, quick skill, so he could have chosen to go here and not take a hit, but because this added the plus two, now I take a hit no matter what, so I'm not gonna use my skill, which so far that skill has been absolute crap. Um, why am I rolling? I, I'm taking a hit. So I get another damage marker. And it's a wing. Another wing. Uh, we're screwed. And then I have to go to the tail. And this is another expert that's going to end up killed. Jesus. Okay. So now let's uh, let's send the next guy in for his doom. It's like sending people across the no man's land in World War One. Um, same conditions. I'm, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just steal the tokens from the other the other guy. So I just stole them from the last one. And yes, he's climbing. We're doing the same thing. We're not changing a thing. And here we go. Tail, high, two. We take two hits and do one damage to him. And Grislowski has the breakaway skill. All right. Well, we at least damage the thing. Um, I'm not sure. By the way, let's just do our collision check. See how it, that would have looked like. Oops, that's not the collision check. So that would have meant we had to spend two TP. Uh, I think, I'd have to look it up, but I think we'd actually be okay, as long as we can afford it. Um, that would have survived the collision check. And both of them could have had the Rada advantage. But, all right, so let's do the two hits on us first. Here's the two. We have an Elevator 7 and a Fuselage 3, so uh, we have another guy that's going to die. And let's do the damage on him. And we have an engine with a 6. So it's possible we can hit that 6. Ooh, I got a nine. All right, so here's what happens. This engine damage stays on him because uh, these damage markers are important for the next map. But he's going to fall. That doesn't mean that he um, uh, he's not destroyed. He's just falling. And he's going to fall with uh, zero damage to the engine. But he does fall nonetheless. So a couple of things happen when, when a plane falls. And this plane fell because of a battle with a fighter. So the first thing happens is uh, our fighter gets an experience point because he uh, knocked a plane down. So it is Grzlowski, so he actually has a second experience point that he's getting. And um, if he were to have destroyed a plane, he would have gotten two experience points, but he only gets one. Okay, so um, the next thing is in an advanced game, uh, if they're fallen, you don't get anything, points-wise. Um, but we do get staffle experience. So a fallen gets one experience point, and this is for the staff. 
And uh, if you don't remember, the staff is separate from the pilots. This is like your commander getting experience points. So the staff has one experience point that it earned. And if it ever has seven, it can change the die rolls so we can make it go to the map we want to go or give ourselves the OP we want to give, all that stuff. So um, one experience point earned, 